Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Dr. Ong, distinguished members of the Academic Council, uh, distinguished lecturers and students, um, uh, friends, ladies and gentlemen. As has been said, um, this is my first uh, official visit to Singapore. Uh, in fact, this is also part of the tour that I'm doing throughout the ASEAN countries to introduce Timor-Leste and also to forge the relationship that we've had uh, since Timor-Leste became independent 20 years ago. This uh, year, the 30th of August, uh, we will be celebrating uh, the 20th year of the restoration of independence of Timor-Leste. And we um, have had the privilege to extend invitations to all head of states of friendly countries, including all ASEAN member states, to be there, even only for a few hours in that, on that very day, to see uh, what Timor is and the Timor um, the government has achieved over the last 20 years. So um, let me start by saying that Timor-Leste is, 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 is the first and the new sovereign state of the 21st century, or as people say, used to say, the country of the new millennium. It is a country born out of resilience, courage, and heroism of the Timorese people. It has received attention from the, all over the world, mainly because of its high-minded commitment to reconciliation, the rule of law, human rights, and democracy. On the 20th of May, 2002, Timor-Leste emerged from the Portuguese colonial administration and Indonesian occupation in a state of ruins where basic services and institutions were destroyed with a strong and terrific vision of ashes. Yet the country has come this way with high hopes and a sense of commitment to overcome the existing challenges now and in, in the foreseeable future. In, in, <clears throat> in, 1990, in 1999, when the country voted to separate from our good neighbor, Indonesia, most of the public infrastructure, including schools, hospitals, roads, ports, and airports, water and sanitation systems, and government facilities were non-existent, destroyed, or severely tumbled down. There were several shortages of human capital, and due to all the circumstances lived, only few Timorese had government experience of where and were prepared with adequate skills for professional services of, or business. The general level of formal education of the population was very low at that time. Most of Timor Leste's institutional framework were exceptionally weak, with the countries having undergone a series of markedly different institutional regimes in recent times. In recent times, extreme poverty and hunger were widespread, and conflict and violence were out were on ongoing threats. Over the last 17 years, Timor-Leste have made a meaningful journey from a painful independence struggle to a democratic nation, focused on state building and peace building, and an accelerating progress on sustainable development. The state of institutions, the state institutions has made great progress, including securing lasting peace and stability, improving security and living standards, and began the long process of strengthening its institutions and raising the capital levels in the country. It has been the vision of successive governments and the eighth and current constitutional government to make Timor-Leste a more prosperous, sustainable development and safe country by the year 2030. There is a clear consensus on what should be a priority as referred to in the national goals of the strategic development plan of 2011 and 2030, and in line with the roadmap for the implementation of the Sustainable Development Objectives of 2030, namely the reduction of poverty, a sustainable non-oil economic growth, improvement of the Human Development Index through a continuous capacity building of human resources in more inclusive and amenable to gender balance, boost the living conditions through a better education and health services, 
and greater access to decent, decent housing, electricity, water, and sanitation, and the environment. And also, lastly, to promote the creation of new jobs, enhance internal entrepreneurship, and develop the conditions to reduce the unemployment in the rural areas. Above all, the aid government is hardly working for a more just and inclusive country, but also for peace, tolerance, security, well-being, and equal opportunities to the most needy and vulnerable groups, including children, the elderly, and disabled citizens, and aware of gender balance and active promotion of human women rights. Because, the, because 2018 marks the end of a period of uncertainty, with renewed hope and confidence at the beginning of a new political cycle, financial and economic stability, the current policies measures are implemented to a recovery economic growth up to levels of 2016. Timor-Leste have for this the expectation of 5.9 percent of annual growth accompanied by improvement of living conditions with the resumption of household consumptions and also political decisions for an effective contribution to the promotion of private investment, which means the implementation of large projects through public-private partnerships. A Timor-Leste Singapore Business Forum is being held in Singapore today, aiming at introducing Timor-Leste's business environment and attract investors to the country. In 2019, Timor-Leste so oil wealth is estimated at 17,633.6 million billion dollars. With the fund balance expected to be 15.911.6 billion at the end of 2019. According to Petroleum Fund Law, the withdrawals from this fund are steered by an estimated sustainable income, which corresponds to 3% of the total wealth estimated at 529 million for the next for every year and for the next year <clears throat> through the broad consultation nationwide timor leste has set the strategic vision of acquiring its financial asset from oil and gas coffee and also other agricultural products with the aim of achieving a sustainable and qualified quality led development and prosperity the government is in favor of proper financial and social auditing good monitoring of the performance of costs and the good scrutiny of results. Last year, Timor-Leste successfully resolved its maritime dispute with Australia. In addition, it also decided to acquire 30% of the shares of ConocoPhillips, the consortium responsible for Greater Sunrise Oil Field, and also the acquisition of 26.56% of Shell's Australia stake in the consortium, which will give Timor-Leste a majority of 56.56% on the consortium's destination. The liability of these acquisitions was made in accordance with the best international practices and will not be considered as a public expense, but as an investment, which allows Timor-Leste to maximize the gains in the exploration of the natural resources with more industry more jobs, and greater diversification of the revenues. All of the, de describe, all of the, de describe, all the, all the described efforts will allow the mobilization of all mechanisms to pursue the national goal to build a modern petroleum industrial complex on the south coast of Timor-Leste, connected to the submarine gas pipeline that, we transport, that will transport different gas and oil products to Beasu, in the south part of Timor-Leste. This new development project was boosted by different infrastructure, infrastructures carried out under the Tasimani project, on which includes the Betano Power Station, the Swai International Airport, and the highway that will connect the municipalities of Kovalima along the border with Indonesia, with and Vikeke, uh, uh, an area towards the eastern tip of the island. In view of what is being planned in the his historical roots of a past, which defines a present and projects the future, once again, the main lessons of the fight for liberation and reconciliation, uh, reconciliation are recapitulated. That is, to successfully overcome a major challenge and risks, the major challenge and risks, we need, to, we need a common sense and the vision of the most audacious 
courageous and resilient. As, as said the president, uh, the current prime minister of Timor-Leste when he was still was the president several years ago. Thus, the priority actions of the current government essentially take the following priorities. The first is to is strengthening of social capital, especially in health and education. Secondly, establishment of the plan of infrastructure to lay the foundations for growth and, and sustainable development. And th third, to implement the necessary measures for an effective economic development, supporting private initiative and entrepreneurship, bringing prosperity through job creation and economic diversification. And, and fourth, and lastly, strengthening the institutions for good governance and better, better services. Against this, breast, break, this background, it is relevant to evaluate the comprehensive government program in the focused areas that allows to fulfill the requirements for an effective addition to, of Timor-Leste to a family of nations of Southeast Asia. First is to increase, uh, increase of agricultural pr production to guarantee food security and to reduce malnutrition. Enhance the quality of education in an inclusive way geared to the needs of the labor market. Developing and improving access to health, namely in the rural areas. Enhancement of the basic infrastructure for sanitation, drinking water supply, drinking water supply and development of urban and rural roads. Strengthening the tourism sector with a focus on community tourist sites and implementation of the administrative decentralization program, which started three or four years ago. Excellencies, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, let me now turn to, the, turn to the other issue. That is the issue of ASEAN for Timor-Leste. The issue of ASEAN membership has been documented since 1975 in a scenario of an independent Timor-Leste. In, in 1989, Mr. Shanano Guzman, the first president of Timor-Leste, the leader and father of the nation, reaffirmed the same intention in his peace plan initiative to the international community before Timor-Leste become independent. That, uh, and that an independent East Timor will, will apply to become a member of the Southeast Asian nations. In 1998, when the country's main resistance front, the CNRT, the umbrella organization which represents Timor-Leste uh, during the resistance, introduced a proposal for a constitution the participation of Timor-Leste in ASEAN was con considered a main priority, along with integration in the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation APEC for, for a balance of interests. In 1999, Dr. José Ramos Horta, the second president of Timor-Leste, who is at the moment, is currently in, in Singapore with me, the Nobel Peace Prize, and a Nobel Peace Prize in 1996, underlined the importance of articulating efforts with Australia and New Zealand while acknowledging the need for a reapproachment with the ASEAN group. It, he advocated, it advocated observer status as the first approach to then lead to an effective accession process. Three years after independence, in July 2005, Timor-Leste joined the ASEAN Regional Forum and signed the ASEAN Treaty of Friendship and Cooperation. In 2002 and on February 2nd, 2009, the National Secretariat for ASEAN was established in Delhi in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and began the work to prepare the membership process. The application for membership took place in March 2011. It has now been eight years since then. After independence, Timor-Leste continued to maintain its commitment to democracy, the legitimacy of political powers and empowerment of democracy and state institutions at it, its main foundations. Timor-Leste's willingness to join ASEAN is based on our very nature of geographic location, geographic, geographic location, in the expectations of our people and on the cultural affinity with neighboring countries. In March 2011, Timor-Leste officially submitted the ASEAN membership application, as I mentioned, and we will continue to pursue effect, effective accession as a priority in Timor-Leste's foreign policy, fostering long-term national strategic interest in the region. The government of Timor-Leste believed that the country by, himself, by itself can actually achieve a lot and allow me, allow me to express to the distinguished guests the four particular Timor-Leste's conditions that should satisfy this endeavor. 
Number one, the country has, the country has focus on sustainable and, and inclusive growth. Number two, Timor-Leste is on the good way for a fiscal reform and a good capacity to control its domestic income and public expenditures. Number three, Timor-Leste knows that it doesn't need to spend so much more, but certainly much better. And number four, Timor-Leste is making all the efforts to have a good and transparent governance because these variables will be the key for the private sector to take an interest and to complement the budget state with non-oil gross domestic product for sustainable development of this country. We are very glad to learn that a fact-finding team from ASEAN will be in Timor-Leste in early September of this year to assess the political viability of the country to join this organization. Another fact-finding team will also be in Timor-Leste either at the end of September or in early October, this, also this year, to look into the economic pillar of Timor-Leste, the, the economic development of Timor-Leste on the conditions as well. Hopefully, this, with this fact-finding visit, a positive outcome could be pronounced at least by 2020 or 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, notwithstanding uh, with in increasing trade capacity, Timor-Leste potential accession to ASEAN is linked with the main domestic exports outside oil and gas, like coffee, and the national economy, and the national economy need to scale up small existing markets and grow new niche markets to facilitate the rapid disposal of their agricultural production. Timor-Leste has a very low and uniform tariff of 2.5%, with very low exception and no state quotas joining, joining can guarantee Timor-Leste's market access and contribute to growing exports, particularly in Asia. Almost 40% of Timor-Leste's total trade in goods was with Indonesia between 2012 and 2014, with Singapore, and also with Singapore, China, and Vietnam making up a further 30% of trade. According to the World Bank, Timor-Leste is accessing, uh, assessing even a small fraction of niche, quote unquote, external markets could be trans transformational for a small country like Timor-Leste and improve the livelihood of Timorese people. The country is developing an innovative customs systems that will help to create a modern and professional customs authority and improve trade facilitation and revenue collection. The custom and tax reforms is taking place at the moment and, and that will enable Timor-Leste to economically integrate into ASEAN and the other regional countries that have leading agreements with ASEAN. The large support of the East Timorese people for Timor-Leste's addition to ASEAN firmly relates with the values and normative ideas associated to the four pillars that guide the state members. Fundamentally, under the long-term long -term aspects related with the different dimensions of culture, similar un and unique of the countries, as well as their strong relationship between them in enhanced, in enhanced people ties commonly lived. The 2019 strategic approach of Timor-Leste to ASEAN is based on the purpose, on the purposed economic growth and security within the framework of regional integration. It is a growth that is not at all similar with the procedural difficulties found in the initial phase when Timor-Leste submitted the application to ASEAN in 2011. Timor-Leste has by now had the human and technical capacity to do what it was in between 2019 and 2000. It was not able to do so in 2019 and 2006. From 2007 and onwards, a, st a structured economy was introduced. And in 2011, a new strategic development plan of 2011 to 2030, which aimed to lay the foundations for economic development was also introduced. As it progresses, today one can see signs of vibrant, vibrant economy and the fact that there is a functioning justice system, as well as the strong legislative framework, and above all, the evidence that most ASEAN member states requires, that is an enabling, enabling business environment which will allow Timor-Leste's economy to flourish, and this can be expressed as a real uh, issue that is, 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 is taking place. 
Dear um, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, from 2014 and 2016, Timor Leste held the presidency of the community of Portuguese speaking countries, composing of nine countries, and had the experience to organize meetings and conferences and summit of head of states and governments. Timor Leste, as state in many occasions, has also embarked on a mega infrastructure project of Tasimane in the south coast of the island with the plan of building a refinery and petroleum supply base along the south coast. As mentioned before, a new highway is also being built, and it is expected that in two or three years, a pipeline from the Greater Sunrise oil field will be piped on, sh on shore. This is a project that is estimated to have a life of about 50 years, worth approximately between 40 to $50 billion. In addition to that, a significant number of interest from outside to invest in the infra infrastructure has also been sought. Soon, an international hotel known as Hilton of Timor, of Timor Palm Spring is expected <coughs> to, launch, to be launched, and new uh, and other five-star hotels might soon, to, might soon follow. The Dutch-based company Heineken has been generous enough to establish its, his, its new factory in Timor-Leste, producing a variety of beer products known to the international market. A new Australian Timorese joint venture called Cement uh, Timor, or on cement exploration and production, uh, has been launched in the area of Baucau, in the east part of the island. It is a project expected to have a life of 200 years, and of course, worth billion, billions of dollars. The same site of the project is expected to serve also as the production site of asphalt for roads, adding up, up another 200 years worth of age to the life of the project. All these developments show that Timor-Leste is on the right track to contribute to the region, not, and not becoming a burden if it ever joins the organization. The largest reason for postponing the admission Ladies and gentlemen, the, largest, the, the most common reason for postponing the admission of is the skepticism about Timor-Leste's ability to fulfill the obli its obligations and responsibilities of becoming a member of the organization. It is argued that Timor-Leste has no human resources or the minimum require, required number of English-speaking staff to attend ASEAN meetings, which are, which are hundred a year, hundreds a year, or about 50% of them where 50 of, about 50% of them requiring economic specialization. My, in my sincere opinion, and for our own credibility in a challenging geo geopolitical environment, ASEAN should have the most important priorities to achieve greater economic cohesion and regional integration as the necessary condition to deal with the new challenges in a globalized world. As for Timor Leste's ability to lead international events, I would like to stress that, and, and as I said before, in 2012-2013, Timor-Leste has proven to be able to organize diplomatic events such as the electoral observation missions of the ASEAN Regional Forum, and OECD, and also the anti-corruption initiatives for Asia and the Pacific. <clears throat> A civil society conference on the ASEAN People's Forum was also held from 3rd to 5th of August 2016, an initiative of the Timorese government also, as I said before, the CPLP presidency, the Portuguese-speaking country's presidency between 2014 and 16, had a public relations effect on ASEAN, both for its environment and training, and for the idea of Timor-Leste Timor being, being the link between Southeast Asia and the Portuguese-speaking countries. The Secretariat of a small G7 Plus organization hosts to 20 conflict-affected states is in Delhi, and has said the experience of, of organizing ministerial meetings in Delhi, Europe, and at the sidelines of United Nations General Assembly, meeting, uh, <coughs> meeting <coughs> annually. The, this fragile to fragile cooperation also sets up a hub in, established a hub in Lisbon, Portugal, and is financing fully by the Timor-Leste government. Meanwhile, Timor-Leste has opened embassies in all ASEAN countries and has sent offices to the Secretariat of ASEAN in Jakarta, Indonesia for secondments. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, 
The entrance of Timor-Leste into ASEAN will give Timor-Leste access to an important role in the discussion on security, economic development, and integration issues. Under a regional framework, and in this sense, its important socialization among state members will create the solid condition for strengthening Timor-Leste's position as an active country in Southeast Asia. The process of Timor-Leste accession to the WTO TO, approved by the General Council of the Organization on 10 of September 2016 continues in parallel with the process of accession to ASEAN. These two processes are in, intended to be complementary and WTO membership by Timor-Leste is seen as simplifying economic integration in the region, considering that ASEAN members are also members of the WTO. And for many commitments made in ASEAN, there is a basis based on WTO discipline. For example, commitments made on non-tariff tariff barriers. So accession to the WTO opens the door for the possibility of Timor-Leste to have recourse to the WTO dispute settlement mechanisms, which has worked irreproachably with the poorest members countries of that organization and show to the other countries that Timor-Leste's trade is governed, governed by international trade rules. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm really confident in Timor-Leste and in our capacity to face the functioning of the three pillars of the community regarding politics and security, economic and sociocultural development. And to put Timor-Leste as part of ASEAN, as you say yourselves, in the community of opportunities. There are, in the context, plenty of opportunities for the development of our accession, and we are currently working on the means necessary to fulfill this potential. In short, I believe that ASEAN will bring prosperity, and I reiterate all my availability to be part of the discussion needed to find the adequate balance between our interests. Conveying my best votes to the people of Singapore and to the RSIS with regard to the next years of promising achievements and fruitful cooperation, allow me to thank you all for your attention. Thank you.